Hey guys, I'm John and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. Scientists made an accidental detection of the rarest thing we've ever observed directly using an experiment meant to detect dark matter. It was the decay of Xenon-124 which has a half-life of 18 sextillion years, which is 1 trillion times longer than the age of the universe. We'll go through everything you need to know to understand what this discovery means. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and let's get started. Xenon is a dark matter research project operated at the Italian Gran Sasso National Laboratory. The facility is deep underground to allow for increasingly ambitious experiments that aim to detect dark matter particles. This is more specifically for WIMPs, so you can check out my video on dark matter to learn more about that. Xenon 1T is a collaboration of many institutions that include 160 scientists from Europe, the United States and the Middle East. Since 2006, they operated three successively more sensitive phases of liquid xenon detection, the Xenon 10, Xenon 100 and Xenon 1T phases. The hopes for this experiment is to find interactions of particles with the xenon, to search for nuclear recoil events that add up to more than the known background interactions. If successful, it would provide the first direct experimental evidence for dark matter particles. Since the Xenon 1T phase is extremely sensitive, it was able to unintentionally detect the radioactive decay of the Xenon 124 isotope. So let's start by understanding what a half-life is and how radioactive decay works before we move on. The first thing to know is what the half-life of an atom is. Half-lives are essentially how long it takes on average for half of the atoms in a collection to decay. For example, with only 4 atoms with a half-life of 10 years, we can't really tell if exactly 2 will be remaining after 10 years. There's just not enough of a collection to predict the result accurately. On the other hand, with 1 million atoms with a half-life of 10 years, there will always be almost exactly 500,000 remaining after 10 years, give or take a few. With a large collection of atoms, there's less of a chance factor and it's much more precise, even if it was chance-based, a bit like how the lottery works. There's no known upper limit to how long half-lives of atoms could be. We know that some are so fast that they're essentially instantaneous, those are highly radioactive substances. And we also know that some are far longer than the age of the universe, which are less radioactive substances. The second thing to know is that not all atoms are stable. Some atoms, or more specifically the nucleus of atoms, are unstable and go through a random process called radioactive decay. For those who don't know, atomic nuclei are made up of protons and neutrons. Electrons orbit the nucleus and are usually equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. When the number of electrons differ from the number of protons, the atom is known as an ion. When the number of neutrons differs from the number of protons, the atom is known as an isotope. An atom is unstable when the protons and the neutrons are not uniform, meaning that they are not equal. This radioactive decay process releases energy by emitting radiation to transform protons into neutrons or vice versa, in order to gain more stability. Protons have a plus one charge, electrons have a minus one charge, and neutrons have no charge. With radioactive decay, a proton can accept an electron cancelling out its charge and becomes a neutron, with no charge. Inversely, a neutron can eject an electron and transform into a proton with a plus one charge. The atoms that undergo this process frequently or not are what's known as radioactive materials. If the number of protons changes, it means the atomic number changes as well, so it becomes an entirely different element on the periodic table. If the number of neutrons change, the atomic number remains the same, so it becomes a different isotope of the same element on the periodic table. It's important to note that radioactive decay is random and can't be predicted for single atoms. We need a large volume to greatly reduce the chance factor. As far as radioactive materials go, uranium and plutonium are pretty well known and they're constantly shooting out particles. 
Uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. Uranium-235 is 700 million years. Plutonium-239 is 24,100 years. Plutonium-241 is 14.4 years. And Radon-222 is only 3.8 days. The shortest ever recorded was Hydrogen-7, which has one proton and six neutrons, and decays on average in 23 yoctoseconds. That's 0.22 zeros 23 seconds. Xenon-124 has an extremely long half-life. It was theorized to be about 160 trillion years, but the new measurements put this figure closer to 18 sextillion years, which is 18 followed by 21 zeros, and about 1 trillion times longer than the age of the universe. Here's a quote from Ethan Brown, an assistant professor of physics at Rensselaer and co-author of the study. We actually saw this decay happen. It's the longest, slowest process that has ever been directly observed, and our dark matter detector was sensitive enough to measure it. He followed with, it's amazing to have witnessed this process, and it says that our detector can measure the rarest thing ever recorded. Okay, but how do we measure the half-life of radioactive atoms that are much longer than the universe? Well, that's simpler than you might think. We just have to control the volume to get a bigger collection of atoms. Remember that we said that the half-life is the average time it takes for half of a collection to decay. It doesn't matter how long the atom has existed, it could happen at any time. So if we increase the volume enough, we can get some decays to happen, and then it's simply about extrapolating the number of decays per collection of atoms to find out how long it would take for half of them to decay. Now that we understand how all this works, let's get back to the experiment we're here to talk about, the Xenon-1T. As we've already covered, this research project is supposed to be looking for dark matter particles. It has 1300 kilograms of super pure liquid xenon, and it's shielded from cosmic rays in a cryostat, which is an apparatus for maintaining extremely low temperatures. This is all submerged 1500 meters beneath the Gran Sasso Mountains in Italy. It records tiny flashes of light created when other particles interact with the xenon in the detector. Even if it was built with the intention of finding dark matter, it's actually able to record any interaction at all with the xenon. The interaction recorded for xenon-124 was of protons that became neutrons. Part of why it's so rare and the half-life is so long is because xenon-124 actually requires two electrons at the same time to transform two protons into two neutrons simultaneously. This is called a double electron capture and it's very rare. I won't go into too much detail here but feel free to go read up on it after this video. What you need to know is that essentially this only happens when two electrons are very close to the nucleus at the same time and at exactly the right time. Those are two very rare events that contribute to the incredibly long half-life of this isotope. Brown said a rare thing multiplied by another rare thing making it ultra rare. When this double electron capture happened and the atom's nucleus decayed, the detector picked up the electrons in the atom, rearranging to fill in for the two that were absorbed into the nucleus. Here are a couple of quotes from the team about this event. Brown said, Electrons in double capture are removed from the innermost shell around the nucleus, and that creates room in that shell. And he followed with, The remaining electrons collapse to the ground state, and we saw this collapse process in our detector. Kurt Brenneman, who's the Dean of the School of Science, said, This is a fascinating finding that advances the frontiers of knowledge about the most fundamental characteristics of matter. And he continued with, Dr. Brown's work in calibrating the detector and ensuring that the xenon is scrubbed to the highest possible standard of purity was critical to making this important observation. Professor Laura Bodis, who is an astroparticle physicist at the University of Zurich and a member of the Xenon Collaboration, said, The new results show how well the Xenon-1T detector can detect very rare processes and reject background signals. She continued with, While two neutrinos are emitted in the double electron capture process, we can now also search for the so-called neutrinoless double electron capture, which could shed light on important questions regarding the nature of neutrinos. The Xenon-1T phase is currently closed and stopped recording data because it's currently being upgraded to the Xenon-NT phase. 
This new phase will feature a detector three times larger than Xenon 1T and will benefit from a reduced background level which will boost sensitivity by about 10 times. I would suggest you remember the name of this research project because it might have more discoveries in store for us in the near future. I want to thank my patrons on Patreon that help support the channel. I really appreciate the support. My Discord server is also currently open to the public to get a few people in there and get some discussions going. So if you're interested in coming for a chat, check the description for the invite link. This might be limited at some point, so get in quick if you're interested. If you'd like to learn more interesting science stuff, make sure to like, subscribe and click the bell notification. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can visit my Patreon page for more information. For everything else, you can go to respectyourintellect.com and everything will be available there. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.